Hey, what's going on everyone? Gareth here, FCP Euro. Welcome back to our DIY video. Today, we're working on this E46 325i that just so happens to have an S54 swapped in it. In a relatively recent DIY video where we did uh, rod bearings on an E46 M3, pretty much half the comments are, why don't you do a video showing how to replace the engine mounts on E46? Well, today, here we are fulfilling that request. Granted, we're working on an E46 325i that happens to be S54 swapped. I guess, mayor for making an M3 sedan that never existed. Uh, but regardless of whether it's an E46 M3 or an E46 325i or a CI, it doesn't matter. As long as it's rear wheel drive, everything we do today is going to apply to you. Today, we're going to be installing uh, these factory looking mounts. However, these are 034 Motorsport solid mounts. Uh, they're basically rubber mounts that have been filled with more rubber. So instead of them being a hydraulically filled mount like from the factory, those voids have been filled with rubber. So these are a really nice solution uh, on a vehicle where you want to keep the factory uh, NVH, but have a mount that's a little bit more rigid and solid. These would be anywhere between the factory mount and upgrading to a polyurethane or a Delrin mount. So if you want something that's a little bit stiffer, both the trans and engine mounts are a really good solution for that. Now that I've talked about the parts, let's talk about the tools we're going to need to do this job, and then we'll go ahead and jump right into it. So some of the tools we're going to need for this job, ratchets of varying sizes, flex heads are useful, tiny little ones like this are also useful. To that end, some of the necessities, 16 millimeter sockets, 3 8 drive, you're going to be using a lot of these. The one that you will definitely want to have is a 3 8 mid-length 16 millimeter socket. Once we get in the video, you'll see why that comes into play. 13 millimeter socket, 10 millimeter socket, 8 millimeter socket, T25 socket, a 3 8 swivel adapter. Long extension, in this case an 18 inch 3 8 drive locking extension came into play, very useful. A fan clutch tool, if your E46 is an automatic transmission car or a S54 swap car or an E46 M3, pretty much any E46 with a fan clutch, you'll need this tool. A torque wrench, any kind of rivet plier tool like this, self expanding or expanding rivet plier tool like that. And of course, if you have access to electrical tools, uh, you know, any of these cordless tools, that's gonna make the job go by a little bit easier as well. Uh, also, Phillips head screwdriver or any kind of eight millimeter uh, nut driver, just in case, depending on the variation of splash shield you have in the front, you might have Phillips heads, you might have eight millimeter screws, it really depends. But outside of that, these are the basic tools you need for the job. First thing we're gonna do is work on loosening up and removing part of the fan shroud along with the viscous fan. The reason being is we need to lift the engine up in order to get the engine mounts out from underneath the subframe. There are many ways of doing this, uh, including lowering the subframe. I don't want to touch the subframe because that could potentially affect the alignment. Uh, to remove the fan shroud is not that much additional work. So again, to have the room that I need to be able to push the engine up off the mounts and get the mounts out between the engine support brackets for the engine mounts and the subframe, just need the stuff out of the way because you don't have that much vertical room between the fan and the fan shroud itself. These little pliers from Astro Pneumatic, the 9581s, make this super easy. So that said, we're going to start by removing some of these uh, self-expanding rivets here, or these expanding plastic rivets. I have another rivet on the back side here that we'll pull out. And then we can go ahead and pull this portion of the shroud out. Next up, we'll disconnect the AUC sensor, and then we'll disconnect the pusher fan up front. Pull the wiring out from the fan shroud, and I just like to tuck it behind the AC lines like so, so it's out of the way. And pull this portion of the air box out. And that's going to expose another plastic rivet on the back side here. It's between the radio operator hose behind this little notch here. This secures this portion of the fan shroud to the larger portion of the fan shroud. And we kind of have to rotate this out of the way to be able to pull the fan shroud out. In a less than ideal design, uh, this portion of the fan shroud physically can't be removed because the upper radio hose goes through it, uh, but it does move enough out of the way where we can pull the main fan shroud out. On this upper side over here, we have a T25 Torx screw that we need to remove. And the next thing we need to do is take our fan counter hold and our thin 32 millimeter wrench and crack the fan loose. All right, so the fan clutches are reverse threaded, so we need to actually spin this to the left, 
which if we're looking at it, we're gonna be moving the wrench uh, clockwise, but that's actually counterclockwise facing the nut. So we're gonna go ahead and just break this free. Drop the counter hold tool down inside the engine bay. We'll get that in a minute. Sometimes these things are very, very tight because either they've been over tightened or they've been on there for a very long period of time. Uh, the CTA counter hold and wrench set has a, a half inch drive on it so you can get a little bit extra leverage on it. But uh, they shouldn't be on there super tight, at least from the factory. If they're difficult to come off, they've been over tightened. All right, and before we get too far, I'm gonna go ahead and lift the car up. There's a couple of fasteners under the car, splash shield they have to remove. And we do need to recover the counter hold tool that fell down the engine bay. So we'll do that next. So underneath the car, we're gonna take the splash shield off to recover our counter hold tool that slipped down earlier. And we also need to take the reinforcement plate off. Uh, but getting this out of the way is gonna allow us to um, make sure the fan shroud is not connected to the bottom of the radiator. Before we start pulling anything up from the top, we really wanna make sure everything down on the bottom is, is unsecured. So we'll start by removing this. We got a couple of uh, these Phillips head screws here. These are like the quarter turn locking style. And we're gonna be aware that there's some stuff sitting on the top of this. So we're gonna go ahead and keep our hand on it. Not trying to get clocked in the head today. And then behind here, we got three eight millimeter self-tapping screws. Yeah, I actually dropped two of them down there. It's been one of those days so far. So normally the uh, fan shroud is secured to the lower portion of the radiator. In this case, the two fasteners are missing, but that's good to know versus just assuming because um, if you try to pull the fan shroud up while that was still connected to the radiator at the bottom, you're gonna have a hard time. So we know it's loose from the bottom. So once we get the reinforcement plate off, which is held on by the 16 millimeter bolts, we'll go back up top, pull the fan shroud out with the viscous fan, and then we'll come back down under here and start the removal process. So at this point, we're ready to uh, start pulling the, man, the main fan shroud out along with our viscous fan. Uh, at this point, I'm just going to spin the fan. There we go. Our next step is going to be to remove the top nuts for the engine mounts. They're 16 millimeter. They can be accessed from the top if you use a 16 millimeter socket on a swivel extension or a swivel socket and then a uh, long extension, you can easily reach it. So I'm gonna start on the passenger side first, which is a little bit more visible. We're just gonna go ahead and work it down, make sure it's properly secured on top of the nut, and then we should be able to break it free relatively easily. The key is to make sure it uh, sits completely on the nut like that, and then we'll just go ahead and break it free. And now we're gonna go ahead and do the same here on the left side. Uh, I'm gonna work it down in front of the air intake tube, uh, but plenty of access with the swivel adapter and then again we're going to break it free it's probably going to be a little stubborn at first but it will break free now that we've gone ahead and done everything up top we're going to lift the car up and uh, we're going to go ahead and undo the engine mount nuts from underneath the car and we can start lifting the engine up off the engine mounts okay so now we're underneath the car uh, i'm going to start here on the right side since that's the first engine mount that we were working with up top and we'll release both the lower nuts that secure the engine mount to the subframe First and foremost, I'm gonna reach up and grab that top nut that sort of sat in place. We'll get that out of there. And uh, when it comes to proper socket selection for this, there's a couple different approaches you could take. A shallow socket will not work because you physically can't get the socket to seat all the way on the nut due to how much the stud protrudes through. A deep socket is gonna give you issues just in terms of clearance and the space that you have under the, underneath the control arm. So while it will go all the way on, you then have further interference problems. What you really want for these cars is a mid-length socket. So we're gonna go ahead and just compare all three. We'll line them up. The mid-length pretty much takes the gap of a, of, a, of a shallow and a deep, and it gives you that little extra room that you need in order to get in there without any interference. So a mid-length 16 millimeter is the one for this job. Uh, you can go ahead and get in there with a flex head ratchet or even a straight ratchet, no problem at all. The other option is using a swivel head socket, um, but I prefer to do it this way if I can. And we'll go ahead and do the same here on the other side. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and lift the engine up off the engine mounts. Again, a couple different ways you can do this. We have uh, the access to a lift here, so I'm just gonna use this um, 
pole jack from underneath. Uh, you could also use an engine support bar from up top. However, I'm choosing not to do that uh, strictly because it sits pretty far forward uh, and I'll be working primarily underneath the car. So having to go back up top, use the support bar to push it up, come back down under, doesn't really work in this situation. If you're working on jack stands in your driveway, outside of making sure the car is totally stable, you can use a floor jack to also push the engine up. Just use a piece of wood between the jack and the oil pan and uh, you'll be perfectly fine. Um, wood is pro piece of wood is one of the most useful shop tools you can have. So we have the uh, engine on the left side high enough that we can push the engine mount up off the subframe and then pull it out. Now the left side is always going to give you the most amount of room. The right side is always the one that's a little bit tricky, uh, but we got a couple tricks for that. Because the original engine mount that we pulled out, the one that was compressed, was such a pain to remove, um, went ahead and thought this one through. We have the brand new engine mount going in, which is three millimeters taller. Uh, I've gone ahead and lowered the engine down slightly with the pole jack, which is going to create a little bit more wiggle room to get this in. And then once I have the uh, new engine mount near the subframe, I can go ahead and push the engine back up. I'm um, trying to work with the car here a little bit instead of struggling unnecessarily. So we're going to go ahead and uh, push the engine mount through between the frame rail of the car and the oil pan around the fuel lines, which is a little challenging, but it'll go. There we go. And we'll push it forward and now it's in an area where we can actually get it in place. We can now push the engine back up. All right. Took a little maneuvering. But uh, when you go ahead and put the engine mount in on the subframe end, you want to make sure that the alignment dowel is facing forward. There's actually two holes on the subframe for the stud to come through. You want to be right there in the middle. You can also look at the witness mark for where the nut was before. And now we'll go ahead and lower the engine back down onto the mount. Want to make sure that the engine support bracket lines up and then we can go ahead and lower it down. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take one of our, two of our new nuts for the engine mounts. And we're gonna thread them on, but we're not gonna tighten them just yet. So we still need to get the other engine mount out. And the plan on this is because of the shape of the engine, how it slants, when you push the engine straight up, it automatically wants to tilt to that side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the AC compressor bracket to try to push the engine that way using the new engine mount as a pivot point. This bank two cat is already touching the body of the car. Do have it high enough to get the mount out though, because this thing is super compressed. The right side mount always is, and obviously uh, it's in pretty rough shape. So like I said, the uh, nine millimeter difference in thickness between a new mount and an old mount makes it impossible to get the new mount in. The two options you have here are to either lower the subframe to get the extra space, which could potentially mess with your alignment, or simply unbolt the engine support bracket, which is four 13 millimeter bolts. And then you have one 10 millimeter bolt that holds the um, Vanos pressure accumulator on the S54 cars. It wouldn't even be an issue on an M54. Uh, we'll have to do that, just a couple extra fasteners, but that's going to give us the room that we need to get the new mount in and bolt everything up. Just is what it is. We're going to start here by loosening up the bracket for the pressure accumulator for the Vano system. Now I said this general job is the same on all E46 rear-wheel drive cars, which is true. Only S54 powered cars, whether it be an E46 M3 or swap, are going to have this pressure accumulator bracket on the engine support bracket on the right side. We'll just loosen this up and then we should be able to just push the accumulator out and then that'll give us the space that we need to get to the main mount bolts.
sort of push the pressure accumulator up and out of the way. But now you can see the two 13 millimeter bolts there. We have two in the back here. We'll just undo those next. Yep, all of that, just so you can do this. Now uh, we'll just go ahead and start putting these bolts back in. Don't tighten anything down until everything is connected though. You wanna get every single one of these bolts started. The mistake is to tighten a bolt down before you have all four holes lined up. You want to be able to wiggle stuff around until you do get everything lined up. It's also worth mentioning that there are two different bolt sizes. You have some longer ones. These are going to be used in the front because they have to go through this uh, pressure accumulator bracket. And then you have the shorter ones which are going to be in the rear. And you'll be able to tell which ones need to go where based on the amount of thread engagement you get. So, weirdly enough, um, BMW mentions that you need to remove this bracket for the right side engine mount. That's not the weird part. The weird part is that they don't actually list a torque spec for the support bracket. Either way, uh, these are class 8.8 .8 bolts and they have a yellow zinc coating. So, to BMW's standard torque specifications for standard M8 bolts with zinc coating that are eight, class 8.8, .8, 24 newton meters. So, we're going to go with it. Seems to be about right. Uh, that upper bolt that's kind of tucked behind the catalytic converter, we're going to have to sort of feel that, but that's okay. Call that 24 newton meters. Feels good. All right, now at this point, we're going to go ahead and lower the engine back down onto our engine mount here. There we go, fell into place. All right, we're going to go ahead and put the Vanos pressure accumulator back in its mounting bracket. It's going to want to naturally just rest where it was before. We have this little collar that needs to go in. It's like a support, so you can't over tighten the bolt. And then we'll run our bolt through. You have to kind of line all the stuff up in one shot. Get it started. The bolt is kind of crusty, so not really threading in nicely, but there it goes, it started. Now I'll go ahead and tighten it down. If you really want to go ahead and tighten that bolt down, 10 newton meters, it's an M6 thread bolt. I'm just going to go ahead and tighten it with the ratchet. We're good to go on that. We're going to go ahead and take our new locking nuts. I'm going to go ahead and get the threads started. I'll go ahead and thread this one on the bottom. And these are both the same, top and bottom, same size. Same part number, so they're both going to have the same torque spec. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, get the thread started here. Sort of bottom out the, the nut, but not fully tighten it. I will put a torque wrench on it. So now that everything is tightened uh, properly underneath, we're back here at the top. Uh, we're going to go ahead and torque the 16 millimeter nuts to 45 newton meters. And again, we're using the longer extension. I think this is an 18 inch extension with the 3 8 swivel adapter to the 16 millimeter shallow socket. Uh, we're able to use this combination to get to the nuts initially and loosen them. So we can basically use the same combination, to tighten them. So we've just installed the engine mounts, but realistically speaking, it's not a bad idea to also take care of the transmission mounts at the same time. They also wear a little bit less susceptible to the pancaking issue that the engine mounts have but it doesn't really make sense to take care of that up front and then not go the extra step to also take care of the mounts that are holding on the back of your drivetrain. So this is relatively more straightforward. Uh, just a couple things to keep in mind. Obviously the exhaust is right here. Some space is a little bit limited, um, but what we'll be able to do is loosen up the trans mounts from the transmission itself, remove the t uh, four 13 millimeter bolts that hold the cross member in place, kind of just slide it back and then we'll be able to gain access to the nuts that secure the transmission mount to the cross member. So one thing you'll note, this has like a vibration damper. You want to take note of how that's installed. 
So it's the nut, it's the damper, and then the stud for the uh, trans mount then goes through that. You wanna go ahead and reinstall the exact same way because otherwise it's simply not gonna line up. So just make note of that before you take anything apart. It'll save you a lot of time later on when, when you try to put it back together and you can't figure out why it's not working. Using a wrench here to break the nut free. Um, obviously there's some serious space constrictions here because of the exhaust. So we have to work with what we have and a wrench usually gets it done. It also goes without saying, yeah, there are torque specs for these fasteners. Pretty much next to impossible to do it while it's inside a car like this. This will definitely be a case of feel as it goes back together. We'll be able to torque this stuff here. Um, those nuts here at the top of the transmission, absolutely no chance. Before we unbolt the cross member, it's best to support the transmission. And then it's four 13 millimeter bolts. So now with the cross member pulled back, um, we now have access to the studs from the bottom and we'll be able to unbolt the trans mounts. Um, we're having to do this just because of the shape of the exhaust and sort of how everything is in there. Um, just have to work around the car. So that's how we're choosing to do this. Suffice it to say, those are not locking nuts that came off. They are serrated nuts. So they spin off very easily. We'll be putting the factory locking nuts back on. So uh, these are upgraded transmission mounts, somewhat similar to what we're putting on. We're just matching up the brands and replacing everything with you know, new parts while we're here. But these are similar style solid rubber mounts. So I wanted to pull the transmission cross member out just to show you the orientation of the transmission mounts. Um, I have to put the cross member back up above the exhaust because I can't install it with the um, mounts pre-installed. Uh, but you'll see these little notches on the cross member. Those correlate to a notch on the trans mount, which is always going to be on the bottom. And it's just a matter, it's just a case of lining those up. And then once this goes back up in, you'll have like this little notch here in the back, this little tab that's going to line up with the transmission from behind. So it all kind of goes together that way. But worth knowing because you want to go ahead and make sure it lines up so it's properly seated on the cross member. In terms of the, uh, the nuts that we're going to use, because again, until we're using the factory nuts, we have these two different options. We have this one that has the bigger floating washer. That's going to be used towards the bottom. The smaller nut's going to be used at the top because it goes on top of this. So we don't really need the big washer there. This pretty much is all uh, pretty much acting as one anyway. And then I'll rotate the mount to make sure that it's lined up the way it should be. If I can't rotate it, it tells me that the little opening in the bottom of the mount is sitting correctly on the cross member. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down while it's still here. Cause we're not gonna have access again when we line everything back up. The Transmission mount to the cross member and transmission, 13 millimeter, 19 newton meters of torque. The cross member to chassis uh, bolts are going to be tightened to 21 newton meters, uh, also 13 millimeter drive. Now, uh, we are not going to be able to torque those top nuts, but we can feel for it, get it tight. Just is what it is because we have to work around the car. And then we want to get our vibration damper back up in place. This thing is pretty awkward and it can only go on once the studs are all the way through. Everything's at an angle. So when the transmission mounts are flush up against the bottom of the transmission, the angle is too narrow to get this bracket to slide over since they're closed holes. You would have to have the vibration damper sitting on the transmission housing and then you have to push the studs up and through the holes. Hope that makes sense. It's the only way it's going to line up. It's just simply a matter of angles at this point. Next up, we're going to take the other 13 millimeter nuts that we have. We're going to thread those on the studs. That'll at least lock the transmission mounts in place and keep everything together. Again, we have to go up there with a wrench and sort of tighten these by hand 
There's not really any way that we can torque these, so it just is what it is. Now we'll go ahead and reinstall our four 13 millimeter bolts that secure the cross member to the chassis of the car. We'll be able to torque three of these to 21 newton meters, and we're gonna have to feel for the fourth one just because the exhaust in the way. Common theme on this. Now, if you wanna lower your exhaust to do your transmission mounts, you can. I don't advise doing it, particularly in a Northeastern car. But if you'd like to do that, that's also an option. Feels about 21 newton meters. Bend our heat shield back to the way that it was. And now we need to tighten the nuts up at the top. Similar situation, limited access. I'm gonna start with a ratcheting wrench and then I'll finish it with a box end. So the trans mounts and engine mounts are installed. Now we need to go ahead and put everything back together. We'll start with the fan clutch and the fan shroud, just like how we had to take them apart together. We have to put them back together. Just is what it is. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and slide everything down um, into place, get the fan clutch threaded, and I can uh, focus on reattaching the fan shroud. Thing to note though, uh, this fan shroud was missing some hardware, um, which we also don't have on hand at the moment. So we're gonna have to leave it as is and take care of it later. Um, but, we have to start by getting it down into position first. We have to make sure that everything is clearing as it goes into place. Really the most annoying part about this entire process is dealing with this other part of the shroud which goes around the upper radiator hose. But once you clear that, Everything should be uh, relatively straightforward. Just gonna get the fan clutch started here. This is probably the more challenging part. Especially on an older fan clutch and water pump where the threads have some corrosion and may not wanna spin on. Here we go, I like to spin it so that the threads will start. Bottomed out, perfect. Reinstall the T25 up here at the corner. We'll anchor the fan shroud, or this smaller portion of the fan shroud onto the main portion. We have a uh, self-expanding rivet, or a expanding rivet that we need to reinstall. Kind of a delicate procedure just because things are in the way, i.e. the upper radiator hose. Go ahead and tighten this T25 down. In total, there should be four T25 screws on this fan shroud, and we only have one. So the other three screws are MIA, and we don't have them on hand at the moment, so we'll have to go ahead and replace them as soon as we can get our hands on them. We'll go ahead and tighten up the fan clutch just a little bit more, but not too tight. These don't need to be over-tightened. Just snugged up like so. That's it. It's reverse threaded, so it can't come unthreaded while the engine's running. If anything, it actually tightens it more. We have our uh, fan wiring that we need to redo here along with our AUC sensor, so we'll do that now. Next up, we'll reinstall this part of the airbox cover, or this part of the airbox for the suction cowl, which pops in place. Then we have our last piece here, which goes over the top, kind of ties everything together. Uh, all the reinforcement plate bolts are torqued to 59 newton meters plus 90 degrees. To the astute observer, you'll notice that I did not put these two bolts back in. Those go to the control arm bushing brackets. Unfortunately, both of those holes were stripped out and the aluminum threads came out with the bolt. So there's absolutely no point to put those back in. The bushing retainers either need to be uh, drilled out and an insert needs to be put in them or they just need to be replaced. So that was... Uh, that was a nice little surprise when we took it apart this morning, but go ahead and torque this down. So now the reinforcement plate has been installed minus those two bolts that aren't doing anything. We'll reinstall the splash shield. This one is straightforward. It's three eight millimeter screws and then four Phillips heads. So 
That's how you go about replacing your engine mounts and transmission mounts on a rear-wheel drive E46. Whether it's S54 swapped, whether it's an E46 323, whether it's an E46 M3, it really doesn't matter. The only difference, of course, being if it's an E46 M3 or S54 swapped, you have the Vanos pressure accumulator, but that's not really a big deal. It's just one extra bracket along the way. Other than that, the only trick to this is, again, that right engine support bracket, it does need to be removed from the engine block in order to gain enough room. You could drop the subframe if you choose to do so to get yourself that same room, but honestly, that's a little bit more difficult than removing those four bolts to get that bracket out of the way. Uh, outside of that, very straightforward. If you have any questions or comments, leave in the comment box below. If you like this video, hit that like button. Also, hit subscribe. We have a lot of videos on the way. As always, we'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching.